welcome everybody to our second episode of Push to Talk. We need some sound effects now when I say that. <laughs> but, well, you have a whole uh, intro music. Have you not listened to your own show? You have your what? own intro music for the show. You didn't even inform me of it. Oh, no. You yeah, picked I picked it. it out. No shit. I, oh, my God. Guys, I, need I, some, I need some fireworks. I want some fireworks and some bangs. You know, give me like a... Like a it's a pretty it's, upbeat tune. I, I, I need like Captain America's shield slam me against Thor's hammer sound effects. Okay, I mean, I could literally just take that sound effects, put it in here, but it's not going to be great in case Marvel comes after us. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want, you know, Disney you knocking know, that on was the gonna door. Be- that was gonna be this is gonna be a, a interesting intro already because now I'm already having questions. I was gonna ask you one day mm-hmm. if I wanted to add some Star Trek shit, you know, like sound, sound effects and noises and whatever. That will probably get caught somehow, right? Well, we could add like the sound Star effects Trek. and stuff like that. This is a great conversation for anybody interested in in content yeah. creation. Uh, you could add the sound effects if they're um, mimicked, like if they're not necessarily the exact Star Trek sound, but somebody made a mm. similar one. We have to. It's we use a common license. We have to give them credit for it, or buy it from them. Like like our theme song, all our theme songs, all the music we use, we bought the rights to. Um, Got it. Yeah, and so or if it's if we're just using straight up like Star Trek sounds, we could use those. Um, and generally they're cool with it, especially if I think if you like if you're reviewing if you're reviewing something you can use them if you're using them as like your own like my starship happens to have the same sounds as Voyager uh, that it. you can't do. I think you're fine. Okay. Okay. Push comes so to they come in. after us yeah. and I get excited because I get to talk to the people who make Star Wars and Star Trek. Like, that'd be cool. Yeah, right. So, that's fine. <laughs> we're suing you. Oh, my God. But you worked yeah. on Star Trek. <laughs> that's like uh, Paramount one time. Uh, we, we were posted an early image from mm-hmm. a fucking Sherlock Holmes movie with Will, Will Ferrell in it. Uh, Paramount came after us. And I was like, oh, that's cool. We got a cease and desist from Paramount. That's so neat. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so the reason why I bring, uh, real quick, bring up Star Trek, this is going to be our plug into episode three. We're going to talk about a lot about Star Trek and then episodes that I've watched and I've graded myself as someone that hasn't seen anything of Voyager. But He's now, like new, I said, we're on episode fan. two, and episode two are uh, kind of like our main topic we're going to be in and why I brought Frank uh, back on again is that we listened to an audible book um, of Sandman, which in was October, kind of. October, I think, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kind of. It's kind of hard to get through, but what it is is basically like a comic version. Well, a comic being told and not an audible, audible, audible version. version. Well, and, yeah, and they so. did the dramatization too. So actually, I did voice action stuff like that. Really good ones. They yes. Had, um, yes. Really good ones. I can't remember them all, but yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to talk about that, but as always, if we could get our uh, geek questions of the day, we, we will. I just want to mention real quick. So we, we actually mm. recorded this review for so the Sandman back in like November or something like that, the recording came really bad. And then it was like, okay, we got to do this again. And we just kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. We haven't been running any audible ads because we're like, well, it's not fair that we run audible ads until we have audible reviews out. So this is the return yeah. of the audible book club. Uh, I don't know if we'll always do them to push the talk, but we will continue to do them from yeah. here out. We're yeah. just catching up. So this one, and then we have uh days of future Past is the next book we're doing. That will be the following week after this one comes out. It may be on news of the week though. Um, so we're going to catch up guys. All right, here's your first geek box question. Would you be able to destroy the one ring? Oh. Uh, I don't know. I, I, it's kind of tough because then I would be like, okay, well, it depends how I feel because I don't want to be like Frodo, right? And he gets all right. jacked up and stuff, and I don't want that feeling. But then, will that feeling happen? But I get so addicted to him as well. And now I would love the power for sure. Um, right. I'd probably use it for evil because that's just who I am. Uh, but, um, nah, fuck it. I'm keeping it and I'm ruling everything. Thank you. See, oh, it's, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually, Gandalf is the one I would use as an example for this. Cause he doesn't want to take it. Cause he says that his intentions would be good basically, but it would use him to do evil. And I would, I imagine that my, my mindset would be like, well, I'll take the one ring and I will unite the world and create justice and it'll be really great and yada, yada, yada. Not knowing that I'm actually, you know, becoming a dictator, you know, but yeah. I know my personality would be like, oh, yeah, I will take that ring and I will do good with it. And Gandalf, he's so wise and powerful because he's able to realize that he would use him in that way. And I would be like, uh, no, I'm too dumb. <laughs> I'll just be a good guy. <laughs> yeah. Let me be the next superhero and stuff like that. So I would take it for sure. Yeah. OK. All right. You ready for the next one? Awesome. Awesome. Next one. Which tabletop games do you take on vacation? Chess. I love a good game of chess. 
out on the beach, like like you know when we go camping or stuff like that, next to the beach, something like that. Yeah. You give it chess. I, I love it. It's good stuff. What about you? Yeah. Uh, I in the past I've done chess before as well. I've even tailgated at uh, football games with a game of chess. I used to have like the Transformers chess. So it'd be kind of cool. You got the Decepticons one side and the Autobots on the other. Nice. But I think now is uh, I got hooked on to uh, this um, uh, Monopoly card game. Monopoly Go, I think it's just what it's wow, called. Really? And it's like a super fast version of Monopoly. So you basically just have to get uh three or four sets of uh like the all blues, all purples, whatever the case may be. As long as you complete that set, okay, that's locked in. But then it's like the wheel. There's no like wheel in the deal, and it's more like, hey, I got this card, I'm gonna take away your your two purples for one of my property, kind of stuff like that. Uh but it's really neat. I like it. You we'll have to play it together. We'll have to check it out. It's only like Is it five called bucks Monopoly or some shit. Deal? I think that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. I'm adding to cart right now. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, if you want the same, it's not the same feel, but at mm-hmm. least you're playing Monopoly and it's like, you get through the games a lot faster. I like that one. The like that. the history like of Monopoly, that. by the way, guys, is very interesting. It was actually invented by a woman who was trying to say that Monopolies are bad and that people are like, and there was like two plays, two ways of winning, of playing it. You can play it to where like, oh, we share all the money and all the land and everybody wins or one guy's greedy and asshole. And the idea was that like, oh, but that's a bad way to play. But then when people started like making their own versions of the game, they're like, yeah, but that's a fun way to play. <laughs> and so it's yeah, right. a whole thing. It's a very interesting history behind Monopoly. You guys check it out. It's really cool. <laughs> you want to do one more card since we got through those ones pretty quick? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Boom. One more. We got elves or dwarves. Which one would you rather be? Elves or dwarves? Oh, oh man. Elves. I'm fucking hot as shit. I want to be <laughs> hot with them. <laughs> I, yeah. I do like dwarves. They're very cool. But elves all day, yeah. man. They're just too awesome. Yeah. Especially yeah. like legolas man what like, oh man i remember very well the behind the scenes like vignette on wb when they showed that scene where legolas like gets on the horse but he grabs it from underneath and then he flips on the other side it was just like that that is yeah. me i want to be that so mm-hmm. bad and i i have the i have a very dwarf body type but <laughs> i would much <laughs> rather be an elf i think sure. i think what gets me is the way of living so it's like i'm all about the scenery and kind of like a, I want to say it, but like a little bougie high maintenance or whatever when I go out and, you know, pay for like hotels or whatever. Yeah. So like when you go see, like I'm basing off, let's just say Lord of the Rings right now. When you see the awesome. the way they live in the environment that they're in, it's like, holy shit, that is gorgeous. That's where yeah. I want to be, you know, really more than anything else. So yeah. Dwarves are always Definitely dirty. That. You're always dirty and it's not comfortable. But. <laughs> no, nobody wants to be but, out there dirty. But, um, um. What would be, would you, okay, so I was going to say, the only thing I would trade that for is living in a hobbit hole. Just oh, in that yeah, land. Dude. God, man, that's those gorgeous books too. lining the walls and stuff like that, like, <laughs> freaking Frodo and, and Bilbo live in luxury. That's like my perfect decision right there. They, they got man, the smoking yeah. up pipe out on the front lawn, yeah. and then you go inside <laughs> and you got cheese and books and fireplace, like, that is perfect. Yeah. Oh, and man. their way, it was, their living is so, uh, uh there's not a care in the world you know and so yeah. you know frodo wanted to go on this adventure and then whatever but everybody else was probably like he's you know doing this crazy shit with the ring has to destroy it but i'm still like smoking a pipe on my front porch like i don't give a shit what's going on out there yeah it, well it's real funny um like in the books they do a good job of pushing this uh their his family's thought of as like freaks almost the because they're like oh they like to do adventures and that's weird like we like to <laughs> yeah. just hang out and have parties and stuff like that and drink and it's like yeah, I'm cool with that too. Actually, I think it would be the rest yeah. of the guys like, yeah, let them go fight smog. Oh, yeah, I might. <laughs> it's someone's birthday, and at the birthdays, everybody else gets gifts. So I'm just like, yeah, there's birthdays. There's at least 365 of us. There's yeah. birthdays every day. <laughs> uh, heck yeah. Oh uh, shoot. I think uh, so. This kind of reminds me. I was reading this. I didn't realize, but um, oh god, what's the what's the what's the author's name for uh, Lord of the Rings? Oh um, my god, Tolkien. Okay. Yeah. 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 So he made this, he made actually like this huge universe on how like the Lord of the Rings like kind of happened. So he made like this, his creation of kind of like a heaven and hell and all this other kind of stuff. And I I was reading the book, but I kind of found myself a little bored because I, that's not what I was expecting. Really. I was expecting like, oh, this might be some inside of some more Lord of the Rings. Um, Can you, I know we have the Amazon show. Hopefully, gosh, if it comes anytime soon. Um, 
is will there ever be an uh, okay let me ask this question first now is this amazon show it's going to be during after before what are we getting it's before right uh, no, i could be wrong we i don't know if we know for sure i think it is before because okay uh, what the book i think you're talking about is a cimmerillion which is kind of like the textbooky this is the world that, that you know it's like real big yeah um, yeah I think it's going to pull from that. I think it will be before. I wish it was, honestly, I wish it was a Shadow of War. Like, do the Shadow of Mordor, yeah. Shadow of War games. That'd be fantastic. But I think yeah. it's going to be kind of about that. It's going to be the, kind of the prequel y stuff. Can we, do you think we'll ever see Lord of the Rings expand uh, further, like in the future after the Return future? of the King? Like anything after that? I don't know. And I, I kind of don't mind them not doing that because it just ends so well because the elves leave. So you're talking about a world where the elves aren't there really. And then you're talking about where we have like this, you know, kind of like almost a perfect king. Everything just finishes yeah. off so well, but before that, there are many strifes, and there's a lot of really good story yeah. that's already written. I mean, like the 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 creation of Sauron and stuff like that. Like he was just, you know, he wasn't always just like foreboding god like character. There's so much more to him. So I mean, tell that story. There's so much there. Yeah, Something yeah, like and they do a good job too. Because I, I mean, um, I don't know what it is with me. I haven't be any of the middle earth games or shadow of war shadow shadow mortar shadow of war you need to fucking beat those games already they're I so get great so i don't know what it is but it's like i get You're so just having just too much fun i like oh, i have to stop because i'm having way too much fun with this game is that what it is <laughs> it is too much fun let me just go back playing fucking animal crossing okay yeah i didn't <laughs> so. I, I quickly need to numb my brain with some animal crossing and tetris i can't have this much fun it's too exciting for me my heart rate no you need to play those <laughs> yeah. games honestly you can go right into two and i would be happy if you just played two Shadow okay, so yeah, I put a lot of hours in in, in the two um, because it was what was it free like on the Epic Game Store or some shit or whatever I got for free. So cool. and uh, I'm in no doubt about it. I'm enjoying it. I think and I and everything. I don't know what it is. It's just me just giving up on a game. Um, but those stories are so well done too. Like you're right though. Like this Amazon thing could have just been that. Yeah, and I've been totally fine really with it. Could have been. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyway, speaking of like books and whatnot, <laughs> we're going to go to our main topic of what we're talking about is uh, Sandman that was uh, published by DC. This is kind of like the comic book, uh, bringing comic books to Audible. And what really got my attention on this is like a super, I don't want to say interactive, but super, it has a cast. It has like these sound effects and and uh, being narrated. And some of this cast was, uh, uh, I'm going to jack up all these names too. And I love this freaking actor. And I've said it multiple times on this podcast, but it's going to, uh, the main, one of the main characters, obviously John Constantine. Um, and it's played by Taron Egerton. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm sorry, but he's like, yeah, he can play anything too. Yeah. I said, it right. Yeah. Uh, also we have yeah, as a uh, Morpheus, was also the main character. I think that's Sandman himself. If I'm correct, that is the well, it's not this. No, okay. Oh boy, I, it's been a bit since we listened that? to this. That's not the same yeah, man right? himself, but it Morpheus the main character. Yeah, Morpheus the main character. Okay, San. Yeah, oh God, I'm trying to remember all the spots. So anyway, I know, man. <laughs> speaking of all the confusion, uh, we're gonna explain. At least for me, I'll explain my confusion on, of of this. But we have uh, James McAvoy, Andy Circus is in this as well as uh, Kate Dennings um, is uh, is in this as well. So right off the bat. How do you, Frank, like a uh, comic book coming to Audible? Comic book feel ish in a way. This okay, so I think in general it will be good. The problem is, is this is a bunch of characters we weren't familiar with because we didn't read the Sandman before this. So I mm-hmm. think if it was like, so the next one that we have, for example, has Wolverine and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it's a lot easier to be like, oh yeah, that's what Wolverine would do. So it's gonna be easier for yeah. us. This one in okay. particular was hard because first off, it's quite long. It's like eleven hours. Um. And it's a lot of characters that we're not familiar with. I think once we get to our like favorite parts, we'll find that it was these segments that were super freaking great. And yeah. the story was so disjointed because the idea is that, uh, you know, he was captured. He was brought back Morpheus. Um, now he's going to try to find these three, three pieces to regain his power in his realm. Um, and so yeah. it is a lot of kind of like this, like traveling through different places and stuff like that. And that can be very disjointing. Uh, yes. Like th- that whole part with here where he's in hell was freaking awesome. And mm-hmm. that story is cool. But because it's in between so much other stuff and little fillers, like Watchmen has like a lot of that too. Little filler stuff that was just kind of like, it's just not as good. I don't know. I know there's a lot of people listening to this right now. Like what? This was the best thing ever. Great cast. It was actually read um, by, why, why can't I, I don't have the name right here. Gilman, the guy that actually wrote the series is one that was a narrating. Yeah, it. Neil Gilman. And yeah. so 
Thank you. Um, so I, I know that we're kind of on the outside of the norm here, not liking this. Everybody else really seemed to like it. It was really yeah. good segments is hard. That's, that's the thing too. Cause there was really scenes where, okay. So for instance, uh, I'm thinking there was a kind of one of our villain in a way, our crazy psychotic villain, uh, guy who was, okay. Do you remember? Okay. Shit. Do you remember this? He was in the car with a woman and he had the woman drive him to like this facility. Um, right. Arkham, Arkham, right. I think he drove him to. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and that scene was just like, in a way we can really get you like, Oh shit. Like in suspense. Uh, cause he's talking to this woman and at the same time he's like, Oh, I promise I won't kill you. Ends up killing her or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Spoiler. But scenes like that, where it almost seems a little, uh, gr- they, they do a good job at putting the picture in your head. Okay. That's not, that's not a problem there. And each one is, re- uh, sometimes a really dark picture, even when it comes to Morpheus like in hell or, uh, debating on how to get his, um, uh, was he getting the stones or some shit, whatever back? What is his, yeah, it was like his helmet or... and stuff. He's getting his he's yeah, getting all yeah, three pieces okay. of his old armor. Yeah, yeah that's his right. Helmet and stuff. So I think that's perfect. But my issue was, and unlike maybe like most comic books, is that it had a lot of jumping around. Like you're saying, this disjointing this story. So we'd, we'd go like, okay, we're worried about Morpheus. And then we switch back to this crazy lunatic guy. I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the name. Mm-hmm. Uh, him. And then we're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's kind of to the point where I remember one time, like, who who are we talking about right now? And I remember saying that to myself, like, I really had to focus, like, where we're at again, you know? And there was a lot of that to me. And that's what kind of was killing my vibe, really, with this with this yeah, version. It, yeah. it, it jumped around a lot. I think what, what would have helped a lot is if they reorganized the story to where it was much more linear. Because yeah. the, the main... Okay, so if you take out all the side shit, and you just had the main story of Morpheus going around collecting his artifacts, perfect. Mm-hmm. That is perfect. But instead, we had we heard a lot of um, you know the Corinthians kind of setting up for stuff, and um, it was just kind of it was it was a mess. But let's let's talk about some of the cast real quick because I, I do want to revisit the cast. Yeah. So I mean, the hell scenes were fantastic when we had John Constantine down there uh, going to hell. Uh, Michael Sheen played um, Lucifer, and it's it's the Michael Sheen that you've guys seen from like Thirty Rock and stuff like that. It was really great. Um, Andy Serkis played uh, Matthew the Raven. Fantastic job as that. Um, Neil Gaiman, of course, he did all the narrating, and I thought he did a really good job as narrating. How? What do you think of his narration? Oh, I was totally fine with it. I mean, I think he it. it some narrators just have that voice, and I think yeah. this is one of them for sure to fit like certain movies or uh, books, definitely. And, and I liked that he he made sure to add the uh, inflections and stuff like that that you could tell was from the man who wrote the story. Like he knew mm-hmm. what was important and what he really kind of wanted to do really well. So he yeah. did a really good job as a narrator. Of course, we had John McAvoy playing Morpheus, which did this good job of kind of like because Morpheus has. He doesn't have reaction until it's important. Like he's almost mm-hmm. like he's above all of us <laughs> humans. Yeah. But yet he still has compassion for us because he's he's one of the few characters that actually has compassion for humanity in a yeah. way. You know, he knows he knows that he needs us sleeping and dreaming. Um we had uh yeah, uh Taryn Egerton, of course, playing John Constantine. We had Kat Dennings playing uh Death really did good. Riz Ahmed. So I'm I'm not a necessarily big fan of the Corinthian. But Riz Ahmed did a really good job as Corinthian. So, th- I mean, just super great voice acting in this. Um, wh- who did you think did the best job? Um, damn, to be honest, uh, uh, because of how disjointing it was, I th- I'm going to say the narrator. The narrator really, like, got me yeah. through th- through this. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, I mean, like I said, he had, just some narrators have that voice to to be doing audible and i think uh we had a really good job with uh the world of warcraft one uh we did last our last world of warcraft review shadowlands right yeah, yeah shadowlands it a Shadowlands review. just that was all it was called huh and i thought she did a pretty good job um so it's just that you have that voice and that's what that's who really got me through this thing um do it's you amazing have, like, that a, he's a the actual to... writer i just love that he's the narrator yeah. and the guy that wrote the story so it's really mm-hmm. great um now, do you have someone you fell in love with so I I I, I want to shout him out one more time, uh, just because, and this is supposed to be my favorite one was Riz Ahmed's performance because I'm not a fan of the Corinthian himself. I feel like mm. I don't know. He's just he doesn't interest me at all. But Riz did such a good job of kind of like giving him this like it's almost like just like pure evil coming through that voice almost and insecurity and like there's so many things coming through his voice. And that's because you have a really good actor portraying, portraying him. I think he did a great job. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then again with Taron uh, and, um, and his John Constantine, 
there is this almost like there was this bit of arrogance to it, kind of like this like, yeah, I'm John Constantine. I go to hell. This yeah. my thing. Like he's just cool like mm-hmm. that, you know. Mm-hmm. Did a really good job with that. And then John McAvoy, of course, he did a really good job of, of this kind of like monotone, superior creature yeah. being that was just and his frust like a lot of times he was frustrated, and he did a good job of like showing frustration and calm at the same time. So it was really a hundred percent. It was kind of like uh one of the semi opening scene, the very beginning where he was uh being locked up really. All right. Mm-hmm. He was being uh not I wouldn't say he wasn't torture or anything, but being locked well, he up and lo- he, just he just stayed just silent up, yeah. for so long. Yeah. But then it was like when it when it was time to talk, he just, it was like a a cool, smooth way of talking. You know, I think yeah. he just did it. And then with Constantine too, I like how you um when you when you brought him up is the fact that he's this mess, right? But then when it's the serious times he knows it it kind of flips. And then mm-hmm. we could start being, you know, like, hey shit, like time to pay attention. Now do you see I mean, okay, so we got Days of Future Past, the X-Men one coming out soon. Right. Um I don't. I don't know the cast. Did you look at the cast? Did we? Do we know anything about that? Or? That's mostly no name cast. Yeah. Okay. So I'm curious if if this was a push and can we see it in the future, like a like a basically a movie a movie uh, star cast in an audible. Like, are we seeing? Can we see this more often? You think? Like, what do you what do you feel yes. now? Uh. So okay. So Spotify just made a deal with DC to do a series of these. Oh, and, shit. Yeah, and the next one's Batman, and it's going to be, oh, I think it might be the long Halloween, I'm not sure about which story it is, but it already sounds like they're going to be casting some heavy hitters for that, uh, Damn. because DC, of course, did the Sandman, too, so they, they, yeah. they're they taking it seriously. I'd like to see them do a, a Watchmen, because I think Watchmen's just such a great story, and it really takes us back to like one of the earliest, grittier stories. Um, a full ca- Yeah, but I think DC will do it. Marvel, so these Marvel ones that we're going to be, we're going to be dipping into, so we're doing... Days of Future Past, we're going to be doing like a few Marvel ones back to back to back. Just kind of catch up. We feel bad that we're, <laughs> we took so long to support yeah, Audible. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be doing that. We're going to be doing them like maybe even bi-weekly. It'll be fast. Um, so those ones, are they kind of have like a no-name cast, but they're also much more consumable because they're like two, three, four hours compared to this one was a nine-hour, 11-hour beast. That yeah. What's hard is when it's that long. Okay, did you have a harder time focusing on this one that compared to a regular audiobook i think so because well okay so because of the 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 jumping around of the story where what was always on the back of my head was how long how much longer i have with this book so yes with the combination of both of them because the world of warcraft one the shadowlands that we that we read was not 11 hours right it was like five eight was it eight it it was it was around nine. I think it was nine hours. Nine, okay. So it was just like, but this it was just, well you know, obviously easier to follow because it was a normal book. But yeah, I just felt like we can just I mean tone this down. I mean it felt like I was reading all, like a if I had to follow a, a con- condimium. Is that how you call it? Those really thick ass comic books. Yeah, yeah. But, which, one, that's what this they, is. This is a collection of multiple you, comic books. So yeah. that's why. That's why I'm worried about comic books in general being turned into audiobooks because, yeah, you have to jump around a lot because they're issue to issue. And that's what this yeah. was, you know. Now, do you, do you, um, do you, what's, what's your ideal length of a, of an audiobook like this? That's hard to say because I've listened to audiobooks in the yeah. past that have been like thick bitches, 12, 13 yeah. hour ones. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, and they're usually horror ones. I love horror audiobooks because, man, mm. You're just like, you stop what you're doing. You're just like, oh my God, I'm so focused right now. I'm kind of scared. I, I love that. It's great. Um, so I, I think it all depends. I think if it's well, if it's done well, I think a normal narration where the person's reading, yeah, I think it's a little bit easier to listen to long term. This one, I wanted yeah. to focus much more because of the changing voices. And so I think this one took so much more of my focus that the longer time felt more like an endeavor than it does when it's just a regular narration. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. So- Okay, that's perfect. So now, do you feel like if it was it was, it was too much? Like, would you want to see like say Days of Future Past? Let's just let's just say I'm making some stuff up here. Mm-hmm. Would you rather hear a comic book be narrative as a straight story of like a normal book, or do you want to still see this cast being brought in to act like a you know voice acting back and forth? I would like to try. Uh, let let's let's revisit that question in a few. In a few more okay. of these, because we've just gotten one okay. that's this format. 
uh, yeah. of a comic book. Like this is our very first one, and it, again, I, I kind of feel bad about the way we're talking about this because it's so loved by so many, and here we're yeah. just like, just not for us. Really, is what the answer is. It's just not for us. So and I in yeah, and I think is this is a great idea of what they did because it was in a, in a way of in a in innovating of uh, how we listen to audiobooks. Yeah. Um, because if you were to talk, like the. I was so shocked to see this cast and that, that they were going to be talking back and forth that it got me super hyped. And then, uh, and then of course, as I listened to it, I wasn't, I mean, it could be like this said, and I mentioned this a bunch of times that the disjointed story, but I didn't know if I really liked it um, as much because you really were focusing on everybody's quotes. Um, and then you had the narrator popping in here and there to kind of set that setting. Do you feel like this is a, uh, something that could be pushed to where we might, Audiobooks might be well. I know it's kind of becoming more of a thing, but right. can it can it be the next big source of like media and storytelling? Yeah. Okay. Good question. Because yeah, podcasts and audiobooks, both of them are on the rise, right? Mm-hmm. And and we see it from the numbers on our side. But this version of audiobooks, can this become the next big thing beyond that? Yeah. Radio dramas were big back in the day, and I think that they have a place to stay. But the amount of focus means that they have to be all of your attention. Audiobooks in general, like even more so than podcasts, I feel like I have to stop and make sure I rewind that and caught that because I don't want to miss anything. Yeah. So, but this felt like it was the next echelon of that. So I, I don't know. I, hmm. Yes, actually, it, I do yeah. think it might be the wave of the future because, because of the hype that it built. A normal audiobook is cool, but it's like we're yeah. more excited about the book coming out. This coming out was about the casting, the story that was already familiar. So, yes, I think this could be the wave of the future because it would be retelling books that already came out, not necessarily for new books. Yeah. Do you think there's anything more that they could do with an audiobook? I'm trying to think of something right now, but then the only thing you could think of is pictures. But then at the end of the day, you're just watching yeah. a, a Video. movie or a clip of no. a comic book. Yeah, I, I don't know? think there's anything they could have done more. I think the reason this one didn't land with us is why I don't want to give our judgment until we do a few more of these. The reason yeah. this one didn't land with us is because Sandman by his nature, by, by the Sandman book's nature and, and Morpheus's journey is, is not meant to be very linear. Like he is doing something that's straight to the point. Like if you were to just cut out his story, you have a pretty linear story. Mm-hmm. But because they're meant to be these fillers where you're learning about odd characters and you're getting these situ like the whole diner scene or something like that, it felt like it was almost out of nowhere until it ties in until at the very end. It feels weird at the time, and so you're kind of frustrated that you're listening to it, and then you're like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I think this particular story didn't lend to it well, but futures might. Future ones might. Yeah. One thing I thought that was really neat was the sound effects and uh, the setting that it could tie in without actually having to super describe what setting we're in. Um what i mean i'm gonna say did you i'm gonna i'm gonna say i'm gonna say you did really because i think it was a pretty awesome addition but did you actually enjoy that yourself or do you seem like it was just kind of in the in the way like would you rather just hear the commentary or do you like the sound effects and the stabbing scene kind of like every little gruesome noise i liked them i did like them yeah yeah Yeah, it did it did help with kind of like put me into the moment it did it did definitely do that more for me for sure and that's what i really liked about this one because what it uh it really made me felt like I was there without with the additions that they had of telling me like, okay, this is kind of like where we're at now in a way, but yeah. with the, with the sound effects and, and the kind of commentary back and forth, I really did enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, that part of it. And maybe like, you're right. Like maybe when we do get this X-Men one, we kind of like, could kind of, kind of, uh, we know what characters are, it is now. It's kind of like when you're reading a book that's after the movie, you know, or you're, you're going back to revisit the book and the movie already came out. You can kind of paint the, like, who's looking like who, um, and maybe that'll help out with the next one for sure. Um, why, why do you, th- why do you know why, or why do you think they picked Sandman for this? Like, why? So someone kind of like way out there. Cause well, I, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's a character in a story that is beloved by comic book readers, but not told yet. And it's really hard. Cause like, okay. yeah, you could tell a Batman story, which I'm excited for the new Batman one that they're working on. But everybody's kind of familiar with it, stuff like that, and it's it's been represented already so well. This one's actually getting a Netflix series off of, based off of it. It's just not out yet, and actually, Gwendolyn Christie just got casted for it. That's Rihanna Tarr. Salmon is. Yeah, we talked about this oh, when, when we first picked it. Yeah, but um, there's a Netflix <laughs> there's a Netflix series coming out this year for it. That's how long ago when we picked it. I know, I know. I feel so bad. <laughs> We've had people on Twitter too, like, so when are you guys gonna do that Sandman thing? It's like, 
soon. I promise soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just when it didn't come out. That's the part is we didn't like the we didn't like it, and then when the when the episode got messed up, the audio got messed up. But then it was like, all right, we have to record that again. It's like, yeah, well, we will at some point. It was just like we just weren't <laughs> happy about the book, so we didn't really want to talk about yeah. it again. Yeah. So it's unfortunate, you know. But yeah. now bring you back uh, to to Netflix. So. What would you like to see for this one to really make it feel like, oh, this was super in unison? Would it be the cast? Because I feel like I don't think they're going to be able to get. I mean, who knows, actually? I, I don't know if they'll bring this whole cast in, but oh, my no, God, I if I could so. see all these people in one thing. Holy shit. Well, we already like, know I would that probably they, go back and revisit the audiobook. They, they, just, they just cast Gwendolyn Christie. So they, we know that they're not using this yeah. cast. They're, it's going to be yeah. a new, unique cast. I don't think it'll be a so bad not, cast, yeah. but I don't think it'll be. I think it'll be unique. I was kind of hoping to see like a uh, James McAvoy and then the uh, Terry. Oh my God. My favorite fucking actor. I always forget James Terry McAvoy, uh, Egerton. But thing is with James McAvoy, he would actually be a good custody, but James McAvoy doesn't look like Morpheus. You have to have somebody that would look a little bit closer mm. to Morpheus. He sounds like a really cool Morpheus, but he doesn't look like him. So I think they should go with a no name actor for that one myself. Yeah. Yeah. Not even CGI can cover it up for you. huh? No, because he has to be tall Anything? and slender and you know, <laughs> uh, get the guy who played Saru from Discovery. He could be. He could be him. He's played. Mm. He's in like so many movies, and nobody talks about how many movies he's in. It's pretty great. But, yeah. Really? Is he in a bunch of movies? Oh, dude. Yeah, he was. The, okay, so he's the skinny fish guy from the. You know, he's not the voice actor, but he's a skinny fish Hold guy on. from Hellboy. Uh, oh, and you're gonna scare me. You're gonna scare me about that water underwater. Uh, and that one. He does that one too. Are you serious? Yeah. Damn, okay. He's in a ton of stuff. He's in a bunch of stuff. Anytime they need a skinny, just, strong actor to be with a lot of makeup, it's him. <laughs> I was going to say, they just use him as a, as basically his stature. Yeah. I really, uh, I, I really like that. I don't, boy, if this is Discovery, yep, so we'd be all over it, but yeah. I, I was, I'm trying not to branch into Discovery right now, next, but I can't next, like episode, <laughs> next episode of Push to Talk, guys, is going to be our, a big Star Trek geek fest. It's going to be a noob talking to two veterans of Star Trek. I'm excited for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm obviously the new one, so... New fell in love with Star yeah. Trek right now. So I can't wait to take you to a convention, man. Uh, that's it's different than like the conventions we've been to uh, for other things because you're like, oh, I just love uh, Tuvok. Okay, let's go talk to him. <laughs> like, you get to yeah, meet right? him. I, I, I got I've got all their signatures up on top of me right here on Pez's and stuff. So yeah, that'd be really that's, cool. so that's so badass. future episode. Um, oh God, yeah, I'm willing to go, and I will super prep for that too. Like I will, like I'm doing right now. I'm killing these Star Trek shows right now. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I just, just really. real quick, I gotta mention the tweet or the the text message you sent to me and Jonathan. <laughs> You're like, guys, I just I wanted to do this in person. I wanted to come out to you guys in person about this and stuff like that. And then you're like, I'm a super Star Trek fan. I've already ordered shirts and beanies <laughs> and whatever the hell else. You had a mask and <laughs> you just like freaking I out on us. <laughs> I showed okay. So anyway, I text them my order of Star Trek like merch. I don't tell the wife. Of Star Trek merch, <laughs> I, merch I ordered, okay, and I wanted to make sure I got one of everything um, from what I watched, and yeah. I kind of I cut one off, okay, because okay, so on the Star Trek store they have a bunch of um, uh, Chateau Picard stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, right. holy right shit! Right I need those wine glasses and like the cutting board and shit. <laughs> like that's amazing. But basically, like what my my order was basically like, okay, here's lower decks, here's Discovery. Yeah. Um, for some. F- Freaking impossible reason. I always lose a face mask. So I was like, okay, I'll get a uh, Star Trek uh, Discovery face mask. And then I got just the just the normal Star Trek logo sweater. Yeah. But uh, anyway, <laughs> that's I like to say, man, I guess. <laughs> maybe we should, maybe we have to do an audible of a Star Trek. John, well, John, it's, it's funny because he didn't listen to this one because he's been binging the Star Trek audible books. Oh, well, shit. You didn't Damn, hear about I that? Yeah. No, I I didn't even know because so I started. Uh, He's listened to like oh, five fuck, of them I, already. He's like fucking gonna, flying to those things. We're gonna go. Okay, we'll I'm trying to make future. this short with Star Trek. <laughs> I'm trying. We're but, gonna do. Uh, I know. So we're I gonna do recently, the Marvel ones next, yeah. and then we'll do the Star Trek one after that. Yeah. Anyway, so I was shopping. Uh, I was shopping books anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, I was kind of shopping of uh some of this uh Picard series books, just to kind of something yeah. different, whatever, and kind of expand the universe. But I'm kind of gonna jump into uh. So, like, retail a little bit. Okay. So, what kind of pisses me off and why I think retail is somewhat dying. But I know, like, people, we need this instant gratification, of course, because I need to go out and get some right away. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, is that when I go on Barnes & Noble and look at a book, you know, and it's 35 bucks, and then you go on Amazon, and obviously, you know, Audible, you know, Amazon, whatever, Fire, mm-hmm. uh, and you could get it for, like, 17 
like fuck, man. What makes you think like waiting the two days or just listening to the audiobook and book audible audible book is so much cheaper? And, yeah. you know, it's like holy shit, man. Come on. And what's, then if what's you the guys deal? sign up for Audible, by the way, <laughs> Audible trial backslash Geek Freaks or Geek Freaks. You guys want to help support the podcast? We'll mention it again at the end. Trust me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh yeah, then you just pay the, the like 10 15 bucks a month and then you're I think it's 15 dollars a month right now for the two. Um and then you guys get two Audible books, two audiobooks and all the Audible originals you want. You know, so it's really yeah. a great way to go. Oh, for sure. I mean, when each book is costing uh at least a minimum of like close to 20 bucks and it's like holy shit, man. Like 15 you get two for free. So. Yeah. Yeah. But with uh with this and seeing is there any um I was kind of thinking to myself, like, what what comic book would I like to see kind of get a really star cast and um, and uh, kind of do the same same formula? And I think the only thing that would really re- intrigue me the most, I'm kind of like trying to think of the these voice actors that did this and then the narrator as well, is anything that's like a huge villain. Um, and mine, I was thinking of was like would be like a Magneto, Doctor Doom is, is like I would love to hear like a Magneto's. Um, I'm trying to like picture a tone for him and I'm thinking of like a kind of older, elegant, talking, conversational guy. I mean, kind of like what we see in like some of the video games, like, uh, I'm playing Marvel Ultimate Alliance three and kind of like hear that. And I could right. probably listen to that voice all day when it comes to that. Um, is there any, like, a uh, where you would want to branch off to, to these, uh, comic okay, book Okay, I'm going to try to books? translate what, what you're trying to say because you're kind of bouncing around <laughs> on me a little bit. Um, <laughs> is there a voice actor you'd want to say? Is there a voice actor I want to hear like read lines for nine no, hours? No, I just uh, I'm saying I'm telling why I pick Magneto and how I could like uh, uh, easily listen to it and not have any issues with it. So that's where I was going. I see. So I think Magneto would be. I would like to see like big vil- villains uh, having their live audio book for me, and I just uh, pick I Magneto. Maybe oh, a Doctor Doom yeah, really or whatever. Good, yeah, the Taskmaster um, right now has a good comic book run. He's doing the Taskmaster book would be really. Uh, Audible what, really f- what the fuck is up with ta- okay so Tasman? well first okay let me get let me get your answer who would you like to like who would be your like oh, i'm gonna get this audiobook day one this is who i want to listen to uh gandalf not a villain but uh gandalf i would love to hear we were talking about him oh, before shit. okay but gandalf okay. the way he like spouts wisdom but yet is funny and humorous and just chill gandalf yeah hmm damn I was thinking of a comic book, but okay, cool, whatever. I know I'm bouncing my question around here and there because I'm giving my <laughs> thoughts at the same time. <laughs> okay. So if you have Gandalf's voice, what comic book would he read to you? Oh, man. Let's see. Shit, that's another question. Had Gandalf's voice. Which, which, which comic book? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. What, like, basically like St. Man. Okay. What yeah. series would you want him to read to you? It's hard because it... For that particular voice, I almost want it to be not, you know, doom and gloom. Um, something more hopeful. Mm-hmm. Saga. Oh man, read Saga. Oh man. <laughs> I hate the fact that I brought this fucking Saga series to you, and yes. uh, I'm behind. And then Jonathan's ahead of all of us. Jonathan's ahead of all of us. Yeah. God damn. I just borrowed his last books, so I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, is that over yet, or is it? He says it's over, but I'm like, no, there's still some releasing. So I think he's surprised because he's like, no, the story finished. I'm like, they're releasing new stuff, so I don't know. Damn, you know what I was thinking about? Because I'm reading the uh, fuck, I'm gonna say this name wrong. Yet, condemn, continue, continue. Um, Like, okay, the really thick ass fucking books, right? Compendium, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm reading the last one of Walking Dead. Um, and I know that's supposed to be the end of it all. I'm just starting my compendiums on Walking Dead. It's funny, I just started those. The the comics. Yeah, I never from actually from the very beginning. Yeah, I just started mm. the, my first compendium. Yeah, that's why you're just ending them. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I got in and I read the third one. I had someone let me borrow it, mm. and uh, I was like, "Well, fucking!" I and I got one kind of like trade that's after the continuum three. So I was like, "Oh, fucking!" I'm just gonna get four, and, and then I know it, I know this is like the end of it all. So I'm kind of excited to read it. And it got me thinking, like, is there more out there? And what, one I really want to pick up that's like a condemning the version of it, too, because I don't want to like read a bunch of trades or buy a bunch of trades and have them collected on a shelf, is a Oblivion Song. I started reading a couple issues of that and then it kind of gave up on it. What? How do you are you far into it? How do you feel about I, that? It, it, it's really good. And it will it will be adapted someday into something. It's yeah. so good. Um, Robert Kirkman, of course, what a genius. Um, give it time. It's still too new. But give it time, it'll yeah, be adapted. Yeah. It'll, it'll, they will make the compendiums for it, of course. 
Um, yeah. Give it time. It's Robert Kirkman. We're going to find out. We talked about this. when We, we interviewed, um, I think it was D from uh, FTO. Uh, check him out, guys. He's really good. Um, we were talking about Robert Kirkman, 10, 15 years from now, we're going to look back at him like Stan Lee or, or uh, Jack Kirby kind of character that just like created worlds that are so livable and, and just so neat. Of course, not as hopeful <laughs> as a lot of the Jack yeah. Kirby stuff, but yeah. um, really created these worlds. And yes, uh, Oblivion Song's one of them. It's really good. And I can't, I can't wait because uh, knowing this too and kind of cleaning out my uh, comic books and shelf set, he's uh, Chief of Operations at Image Comics. And uh, he had a lot of work done or work he's done for Spawn as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like, man, this guy is just fucking... I don't know, like legendary. And it's just like, he needs to be on the podium with like a Stanley eventually here soon. Yeah. So if you were to sit down and have a, uh, have a conversation with any comic book creator, just like sit down at a bar or a coffee shop and have a conversation with any comic book creator, who would it be? Holy shit. Right. It could be writer or I think because we're, we're going Stanley or Jack Kirby. So it could be either the writer or the author or the uh, illustrator. Okay. So I think right off the bat, because I'm such a huge Spawn fan, it would be Todd McFarlane. And the yeah. only reason because of that, besides being Todd, a huge Spawn fan, is the fact that he's helped with Spider-Man. He's helped create Venom also. So I would like to have a conversation with him. And it's like, how was the transition of like working with Marvel and creating these characters yeah. to now what made you branch off? What what was it that kind of said like, okay, well, I'm going to make my own character, start Image Comics. I know he's the president over there. So how that all transpire um yeah. so that'd be something super interesting and then i would ask him why is it so fucking hard to buy your toys okay so every time he releases <laughs> i watch his instagram videos and it's like oh you can get the special edition spawn from mortal Kombat and shit like fuck you don't know how frustrating it is right now okay yeah. <laughs> so holy shit yeah. uh who who would be who would be yours would it'd be have here? to be jim lee just I kind of uh, just yeah. recently started following up on him about two years ago. I think it was when he first started getting his punk up pops. Yeah. I started yeah. really kind of looking into him. And then of course now he's in charge of like so much of DC. Um, the guy's an illustrator of course. And, and he makes so many of the, the, some of the panels that stick with me the most growing up and in recent comic books that I would want to talk to him about like what, what inspired you to make these panels that, that have stuck with me. So like, you're it's what inspired you to make the panels that inspired me. You mm. know what I'm saying? Cause like some of these things, mm-hmm. some of these images, there's one, um, I think it's a hot girl. Yeah. It's hot girl image of his that I'm like, this is begging to be a big fat back tattoo on me. <laughs> like it's yeah. just so badass. I, I don't remember trust... you said that multiple times too now. Yeah. Uh, it's just so cool. And so I would love to sit there and see what is his thought process on creating these images. And can he give me some of his skills? Cause that would yeah. be really great. I'd appreciate that a lot. So what's it going to take for you to get this back tattoo finally? Cause you've been talking about this for a long time. <laughs> the funding. <laughs> That's not going to be a okay. cheap tattoo. <laughs> we, we need to start a GoFundMe for uh, Frank to get this back tattoo. He's been talking about this hot girl back tattoo and I've never seen the image. So you're going to have to send it to me. I will. Um, I will send for it. Years I will. Now. Yeah. So I'll we, need, it we need to get this guy tatted up. <laughs> God, I've got one and it feels lopsided. I have one on one, one arm and it feels lopsided. It's like, there should be one on the other arm over there. Yeah. Yeah. There that's, <laughs> that's how it starts. And then yeah. you start to get covered. <laughs> so, exactly. Oh uh, shit. Um, so back to sand, man. <laughs> but yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I got, I got, uh, I don't know. I think I lost track of her. I think I'm above 15 now tattoo. So I don't know. That's even... crazy. Yeah, I don't even you know, I'll count no more. Now it's just like, oh, yeah, I just need to get the arm done instead of like, oh, how many tattoos do you have on your arm? You know, kind of ordeal. I'm going to post this in Discord to you real quick, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Let me see this. Uh... This is, you guys listen to the podcast? I might not even edit this out. You're going to hear us do this like long process of sharing a Jim Lee <laughs> tattoo. Oh, goodness I'm not gracious. Necessarily, like, I like Hawk Girl. I'm not necessarily like a big Hawk Girl fan, but. That right there is so freaking. Ah, uh, that is pretty sexy ass. Yeah, t- okay, that's cool. Yeah. Oh man, with this Thundercats belt on. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. oh shit. Yeah, that's neat though. That's badass. That is cool actually. Now, um, Hot Girl's gonna own. T- uh, gonna be on the screen soon, right? TV series. She's gonna, gonna be, be part one? of the Shazam. Or I'm sorry, Black Adam storyline. Oh, okay, that's well, right. Okay, I'm sorry, okay. Hawkman is. And we're presuming Hot Girl will join too. Okay. Okay. Now, would you like this? I know everybody probably can't see this image, of course, but this 
image of hot girl like this is who is this your ideal of who would you like to see in that like popping up right away in that movie yeah this is the version of uh-huh. hot girl that i think is the best version there's a there's one from the dc animated universe that's really good too where she's kind of i like okay so what i like is i like that they're taking a hot girl and they're like okay 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 let's separate the hawk hawk man from the ship and just make her her own character and she's so freaking cool because mm-hmm. Hawkman is cool and all, but I hated the fact that she was just his number two for a long time. And then when he got the animated Justice League, you saw her by herself and you're like, oh, wait, she's a badass. And then when you see like in comic books, um, Jim Lee's got a couple of different hot girls that are just like, she's a freaking warrior. She's like, I mean, she just, I don't know. She, she's, they make sure to angle her wings and stuff like that, where she's just a badass. And so, um, yeah. yes, I want those like sharp, the metal wings. Sometimes they do the metal wings on her. It looks super dope. Um, yeah. So this is this a good example of just maybe like, hey, we should ditch our original creation and maybe just the hot girls have taken over the hot guy image. Like Hawk maybe man, we yeah. should just drop hot guy man. and Hawk keep man. it as a hot man. Sorry. Uh, hot man. <laughs> I and, just like and, uh, hot guy. Hot guy sounds like a dude that hangs out at Starbucks and is like, yeah, yeah, I got a lot of, got a lot of hawks at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking it's like that, uh, the bird movie that Michael Keaton was in. Fuck, what was that? Oh, uh, yeah. What was that Birdman? Birdman. <laughs> That's a good ass movie. Yeah, it is. Very uh, good. Um, man, do you think like maybe it should just be re image? Like maybe there shouldn't be another uh I think so. There's Hawkeye. there's a uh from Justice Hawkman, League number whatever. three is a good image of it's another Jim Lee uh that he made back in twenty eighteen that is even probably more it's the it's the metal version. I'll show that one to you later on. But she's got the sword, she's got talons, like it's just a really cool version of her that mm-hmm. Yeah, like, let's use it. I mean, I think she's, it's hard to say, because yes, Wonder Woman's amazing. Yeah, I like her more than Wonder Woman. I do, as a character, like, mm. as a silhouette and everything. Mm. She's super yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. She's just not developed enough yet. Because she's from Agent Egypt. And she, like, that storyline of her from Agent Egypt, super cool. I don't like the one where she's, like, a police policeman from another planet. I like the Agent mm-hmm. Egypt version of her story. It's so freaking cool. Yeah. I think we all have, like, these, uh, uh, so obviously comic books, they have different versions of kind of like the character. You got to keep it going, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of like the, uh, is it called the Silver Age or Gold Age of Vision, where he's actually a alien from a different planet. He's like an officer and he comes down to try to like regulate shit on Earth or something like that. Whatever. I don't know what really happens. Yeah. But know, uh, it's kind of like that where you're like, uh, maybe that would have worked over the Ultron kind of storyline. Um, But I kind of like the Ultron storyline. Because if you read like any like a uh, um more current, well I guess now, uh, Vision has an, an origins kind of like comic book. It's real quick. It's kind of like the whole Ultron and the Avengers kind of talking to him like, hey, Ultron's really bad, blah blah blah. blah. But it was kind of like uh, maybe, maybe I wonder if that version would have had some success uh, into uh, the MCU right now, you know. But then again, I don't, yeah, I, I, I don't, can't see Scarlet Witch fall in love with this alien looking dude like the Martian Manhunter. M- Man Hunter. <laughs> M- Man Hunter. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, it's we don't know until they're flushed out because the, the yeah. pitch meeting for any of these things sounds crazy. Uh, oh, yeah. There's some orphan kid that comes from another planet. He lands here. The sun makes him super strong and flies. Like, it just sounds like, OK, are you delusional? And then when you flush it out, you see like Kent's growing up, Clark growing up at, in the farm. And then he like ventures out. He's a reporter yeah. and then he becomes super. Like, it is amazing, but the first initial pitch, oh, yeah, uh, this one kid sees his parents die in an alley, and then he really likes bats. <laughs> like, it just doesn't make sense until you actually, like, flush it out, and then you're like, oh, but Alfred's his new dad. That, <laughs> it's just that's great. Super, yeah, that's a super good point, because now, at, uh, I mean, at this time, with, with that, if that, if, you know, crazy-ass pitch, we're all wearing Superman or Batman underwear at this point, shit. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm wearing so. my Batman <laughs> underwear right now. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. So, um, now, you know what I was thinking too, uh, and I kind of want to wrap this up cause I want to leave at a, at a decent time frame. Uh, what I was kind of thinking about is would audible be a great source of trying to pump out, um, uh, like, uh, fuck kind of like hype ups of like say black Adam. Okay. Yeah. I, he could be not like a, on everybody's radar and who he is and what his background is. Can an audible book like that? Like like the one like the Sandman with the you know the sounds and the acting and voice acting, would that be a good way to kind of push out these stories that they don't always want to screen on the screen? So obviously it'd be like I a cheaper budget, I'm assuming. Yeah, because some yeah. things some things just don't play outside your imagination. Some things are too big for your, for outside of your imagination. 
great place to do it because sound is a great yeah. way of kind of setting the environment and then showing you something new. That's why I really like, I know Watchmen has kind of gotten big lately, um, but if you, the Watchmen story is just freaking great. And I would love to yeah. see the conversation between, um, I think her name's Lori and Dr. Manhattan on Mars, um, or is it Mars or the moon? I don't know, whatever. Um, Mars. Yeah, where he's sitting there and like they're having this conversation and he sees the conversation from, I'm sorry, he sees the conversation from all different times. So he's having the conversation. He's like, yeah, in a few minutes, you're going to break up with me kind of thing. Mm. That scene is so amazing. And a good audiobook version of that where you can hear like the glass turning because there's, there's like a glass castle he made that's mm. like, it's a clockwork castle. So you can hear like that turning in the background every so often. Like that would be fantastic in audiobook version. I do think yeah. comic books have a home in audiobooks. It's just finding the right comic book, finding the right cast. It, it 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 will take time for it to become something normal. I do think it has a future though. Yeah, and I think it's a lot of pump out of uh, marketing because if we're trying to get this like okay, so I mean I can picture it. Black Adam comes out. Hey, here's Black Adam Origins that are being kind of pushed or maybe on their uh, digital, uh, the DC uh, comic book app. They really kind of advertise that more. But then if you have it like on all streams where everybody closes, because not everybody's into comic books and not right. those comic book people aren't into the novel. So you're going to get, right. you know, those different types of, uh, of viewers or listeners. Um, so I think that'd be actually a really good idea that I feel like it couldn't cost much. Right. I mean, you don't even have to do it in this comic book format. Really. You could just tell the story of black Adam, a super, you know, I mean, maybe even like two hours, make it like super cheap yeah. and then just have someone read it you know, so, and then everybody could kind of go in with some type of background. You know, um, these audio dramas is what they, this version of, a, of an audio book is called. It's an audio drama. Um, they're, they're, they've, of course, popped up back in the big day. But now that podcasts are on the rise, there are podcasts that are doing their own audio dramas. Mm. A friend of the show, uh, the uh, Unpaid Programming Podcast, ran by Lawrence, uh, they did a really fun story where it's a detective, old detective noir, right? But, all the cast members were legendary wrestlers. So you had like Macho Man as, you know, as it was like, oh yeah, uh, you know. Oh shit. And like, well, yeah. I think she's down at the bar and she wants to, you know, like, it was just this real like Macho Man Randy Savage and the one played Hulk Hogan. I think Hulk Hogan was the bad guy. And stuff like that. I don't remember exactly how it went down, but it was just, it was like us, a bunch of podcasters that wrote the story out, played the characters as they grew up knowing those wrestlers. And played it out themselves. It was a very fun story. It was a blast to listen to. So that was unpaid Dang. programming, guys. Check it out. But it's not, I mean, it's almost like how YouTube was, right? Where people could mm -hmm. just like, yeah, just do it yourself. So you could take these comic books. Say you've always wanted to write your own comic book, but you're not good at drawing or something like that. Well, you could just get a couple buddies and act one out. And it's a great way to yeah, sharing sure. stories. Yeah. And then, That's actually, yeah, a really good idea. The audio yeah. engineering part, it takes one friend to look into it for a little bit to get the basics down. And that yeah. guy can nail it. And then he can expand his skills. And then it's a, a valuable asset. Audio engineering now is a booming market because of all this new podcasting and audiobooks that are coming out. It's a good thing to look into anyways. Yeah. And like, seriously, kind of like what they already get these like actors to do these uh, crazy contracts and make them pretty much do anything for marketing yeah. wise for it. Like kind of like WandaVision being, uh, I mean, WandaVision with, uh, uh, I'm gonna, I don't remember the name. So on top of my head, some will send whoever. They had to do like the, all these interviews, right? For right. for WandaVision. So why not have some sort of deal where The Rock will have to, like, say, DC's YouTube channel, whatever. Uh, the Rock kind of read an origin story of Black Adam, uh, and then with some other people, you know, it going could back be, and forth. Yeah, you could do a thirty minute. Oh my gosh! So you could do a thirty minute story of Black Adam rise and fall in in his ancient land and then be imprisoned and that could be that would hype my ass up so much oh shit yeah and yeah. you could have i mean just think of it okay so this is what the fun part of this conversation is is you're sitting there and you're thinking of like how would you depict the environment you have the rustling sand on the wind mm -hmm. you would have like doors that moved back then like i'm thinking like you know the old indiana jones big stone doors opening like yeah yeah like that sound of opening those all are identifiable sounds you could have in an audio drama it would take the rock maybe two three hours of recording because you have to re-record stuff all the time an audio engineer a couple weeks to do it the cost is very low the height yeah. is very high i that oh is a great gosh, idea yeah. that's a great idea I mean, the rock. The rock brings every. I mean, views just by hearing his name. But I it's know. like, holy shit! If you, if I, 
yeah, you're right though. The hype would just be just turned up so much. Uh, I tell you what, we'll make an offer, Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson, if you would like to come on the podcast and discuss this, we're gonna. I'll figure out a way to fit you on the show. Come on yeah, over, we'll chat yeah, about it. We'll talk about it. <laughs> we're super busy. I know we're keeping separate, but I don't think if The Rock ever came to the uh, Geek Freak Studio, uh, Oak Grove, California, that I don't think any of us would stay home. Like we'd all be there. So I'm sorry, but Daniel <laughs> might find a way. <laughs> he might find a way to be busy that day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would literally. Yeah, I don't give a shit what I'm doing. I tell work like, hey, I got to go home. I got an appointment. Let's just say that. <laughs> okay. yeah. I'll show you the selfies later. So. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, they'll understand. Anyway, overall, though, I mean, let's let's wrap this up. So, uh, I think I do see this as a, a future or anything like progressing that you can do yeah. maybe more of this or whatever, like we like we talked about happening for sure, especially when it comes to advertising, whatever. But for Sandman itself, uh, well, is this a re- I mean, is this a recommendation for you? Is this kind of like uh, I do, or is this like don't I, I do recommend this? So again, uh, we're going to be hearing a lot more of these comic books, audio comic books soon. I do recommend this for anybody who is a Sandman fan already, because then you're familiar with the, the people much more, and I might be easier yeah. for you. Um, I actually recommend segments to people. So if you were to pick a segment from this, from this book to recommend to somebody as an example of how things could be done, mm. do you have a favorite? I'll, I'll start with mine while you think about it. The convention with all the murderers. They were there, like they had famous mm. murderers there, and then there was like, the way they had the voices and the way they kind of had like this background sound of like when you're at a convention of just like there's people talking, but you can't really audibly hear what it is. They had that sound a lot of times. I think there was a scene where there was like they went to the bathroom. You could hear kind of the echoiness of the bathroom. It was really well done. And it was much more about the conversations. So I felt like I was there next to them all chit chatting with them. And it was some like yeah. these like big name, you know, stuff like that. And so I thought that was a really good scene. It's actually my favorite scene from the book. Was there yeah. any part, any scene from the book that you would use an example of like how, well, comic books can be turned into audio, audio drums. Yeah, so I referenced this one earlier, and I think it's because, like, probably like many others, where I listen to the audiobook while I'm driving, was a scene with that psychopath that it, uh, escaped that was in the car to get to somewhere. And what that it was, was like, you were good. really feeling for the woman that he was talking to and like threatening. Yeah. Uh, he was obviously this woman's trying to get him, get him to somewhere that he wants to go, and he's talking about like there's like having an actual like a friendly conversation and she's really hoping the best for him uh to right. get better and they talked about her husband for a little bit whatever but at the end of that car ride he does end up killing her and i was just I was like ah shit like you're like kind of pissed off you know because she yeah. was like really being nice and trying to help you out but then it was kind of like that eerie feeling too because yeah you could kind of put your while driving you could kind of put yourself in that situation or like really feel it while the story is being told to you and that's what that, was, that really caught that- me yeah, well, from what I remember the most from that scene was the tension constantly rising. Like, you yeah, knew, like, yeah. this is just, is, he, is she going to get out of this, or is this just not going to go well? Yeah. Like, it was a yeah. super tension rising moment. That was really well done, actually. That's a good point. That's also the diner, the diner scene for me was tension rising moment, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I've mentioned this before. But they did such a good job of, like, setting up this diner that you just felt like, oh, it's a normal diner. And then when things went crazy with the, with the one nut job, you were just like, Oh, whoa, 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 everything's going nuts. Like, it's like, hold on. We were just at a diner where we were talking about like these different people yeah. who are living normal, unique lives. It was, yeah. just, it was really well done, too. So, yeah. that's the thing is those segments are super good and they're just not chained together very well, is the problem it, with this audio. A hundred percent. And that was, that was my really issue with this book. Um, but yeah, that's a uh, that's Sandman. Everyone, you should go check it out. I, I mean, I definitely do recommend it. Obviously, maybe if someone that's more per. I would say more professional in the audio books. I mean, I know we started this to start second one. Yeah. Uh, at least my second one ever listening to. Oh, it really? Oh, um, yeah. I've listened to audio books yeah. before, but this is my first. It's my first audio drama that's this long. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, this is I'm brand new in audio books. So this is a um, cool. was definitely a, did not expected uh, for me, for sure. Yeah. Um, let's go check it out. I think we're going to wrap it up. And, uh, like I said, uh, before check us out in episode three, I don't think, I know Frank's already going to be three for three on this push to talk, but I don't think I would ever be able to do a star Trek episode without him. <laughs> I, don't, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think he would allow <laughs> One of these that. Push to talks, so. <laughs> I won't be here. We promise you guys don't have to hear me as much as you already do. I promise it won't be your problem. Uh, but, but real quick, I John, want to step in. John's really passionate too, though. So he's going to, he Oh yeah. Yeah. Be talking nonstop. Yeah. Um, if you guys want to join us for the next audiobook, we're going to be listening to X Men Days of Future Past. It's about three hours, I want to say it is. Um, and it's done by Marvel. So this one was done by DC, and DC's really leaning in on the audio dramas. 
This next one is done by Marvel, and they did a lot of these. So we're going to do, I think Daredevil was the one we're going to do after that. So we're going to do like a few of these, chaining them. Um, anyway, so check them out. If you guys want to join us, audibletrial.com backslash geekfreaks. It'll be in the description of this podcast. Audibletrial.com backslash geekfreaks helps with the podcast. We can upgrade our mics. And the next thing we're actually, we just got dropped into the equipment. Uh, he's getting a new mic, new mixer, and soundproofing the room. So nice. all his is getting upgraded soon. And that's, that's because of you guys. We really appreciate that. It's great. Nice. All right. Thank you all for listening. And uh, like I said, we hope to see you soon uh, next time. And if there's anything that you guys would like us to like, maybe bring in the conversation to us as well. I know. I forgot to uh, do that last just, time. <laughs> yeah. Just post, post it on Twitter. That's the most active uh, that the gay freaks are where they're more most active. So uh, yeah, we'll definitely talk about anything that you feel like you have an opinion on something. What about this time? Yeah. Okay. So I will promise to do it this time. I'm going to do it while I'm editing it. So I know for sure. Um, what is your favorite audiobook? I think that's yeah, a good one for sure. this one. So yeah. we can get some ideas and maybe even some ideas for us to use in the future. So yeah, for good. sure. Yeah, favorite for sure. audiobook. Okay. Awesome. All right, you guys have a good one now. Thanks for listening. Bye.